My name is Mike, and I am a failure. <laughs> right, you said it was a safe environment. Um, all right. The, um, before I start, what I'm not quite sure I was going to say in the first place, Terry made me realize one thing in, in, his, in his talk, was that failures are contagious. Um, so, so Larry Ellison, when he was releasing Oracle 6.0 with all the bugs, I was in the middle of doing the deployment of moving a big system to Oracle 6.0. So, so Larry certainly uh, helped me fail in that project. Um, and, and the same thing's true, Richard Branson, and us trying to build CD now, Richard Branson having trouble making money off of music, and we were sort of the middleman trying to sell it. So, um, so, so failures are contagious, and there's nothing you can do to protect yourself from that. All right, um, so I unfortunately have four pages of notes and I have no idea what I'm going to say, so we're going to wing it. Um, the, the, um, I'm, not, I'm going to try to do this without glasses too, to make sure I say everything I want to say. Um, so so w when, when Chris asked me to talk about CD Now, I, I was like, well, we had a great time. We actually, there was lots of good that came from there. Why is it a failure? And, and so, so I, I just started to think about what it meant to, to fail. And, and really, I think other speakers have touched on it. You know, a, a, a failure is not something where you have to crash and burn. A, burn. a fail is something that perhaps doesn't meet its goals, right? That doesn't set up, that doesn't come out to be what you set it up to be. Um, you know, and today we politely sugarcoat it. We call it a pivot, right? <laughs> Nobody <laughs> fails, you just, you know, go somewhere else. Um, but, but, right, so you, you don't meet your goals. Um, you know, and, and I was going to, I sort of was reminded about that. I, I ran into Steve Goodman this morning who, uh, from Morgan Lewis, and Steve was our attorney at CD Now, and he, he ran the group that was, that was helping us out. And when I told him I was speaking this afternoon about CD Now at, at the Fail Fest, he's like, but CD Now wasn't a failure. And I thought about it, it's like, well, right, because your group made millions of bucks. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, um, uh, so yeah, I guess, I guess you know, failure is in the eye of the beholder. That's lesson number two. I'm, I'm winging this, right? All right. Um, and, and the other thing is I, I, I've had, you know, CD Now didn't work out the way we wanted it to. Um, but I've had bigger failures. We can talk about the spark plug company that, that sort of wasn't able to penetrate the automotive industry. We can talk about swap credits, which, you know, was my, my the lesson I learned from swap credits, it was a marketplace for used books, movies, and music, and video games, was don't ever come in and run a company that was founded by lawyers. That was, um, there was two lawyers there. It was just like, um, we, we, we had patents and contracts and a 400-page and a user agreement, but we didn't have a product. <laughs> um, all right, so, 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 um, so CD now, I, I, I want to run through a really quick history because I didn't remember myself, and it's like, well, well, what? It, it seemed like forever, and when I wrote, wrote, wrote the numbers down and the dates, it was really, really short. Um, and, and the perspective is that, that when I started at CD now, I came in as CTO. I eventually, within a year, was COO, and then another year from year and a half from that, I was CEO. So I, I lived with different roles through all the different various periods here. So, so not all of this is, is, is my failure, but, but like failures being contagious, I sort of you know, was able to, to um, feed off of the failures of, of those before me. Um, so we were founded in August of 94, right before the web got commercialized. We, we operated a, a system that was on a telnet service. It was, it was all text-based um, that people would use their modems to get onto. Um, we, we then, you know, the web started um, to become commercialized. We moved the product to the web. Um, and, and basically the web took off from there. So we, we, without doing much, were doubling every six months. We were doubling our staff, we were doubling our revenues, we were doubling our orders. Um, it was, it was for, for three or four years, it, we, you know, all we could do was, you know, we moved. We actually physically moved buildings once a year because we outgrew the last building. Um, so, so this is really the very early of the internet bubble. Um, all of the incentives were grow on the top line, right? It, no, nobody cared whether you were making money. Nobody even asked what your expenses were. It was all, you know, how many customers, how many orders, how many, how many dollars are you selling? Um, so we, we, took our we, we took a bunch of angel money, but our first institutional money came in August of 97. Two VCs put in uh, $10 million. We had 75 employees, and I'm, I'm gonna read part of the press release, or, or a, um, not a press release. I think it was CBS Market Watch. Um, okay, yes, yeah. online CD now gets $10 million investment, two venture capital firms split the outlay, the Monco merchant, which sells compact discs via the web, will launch a national promotional campaign. That pretty much, that's not the article, that's just the headline. 
Um, City Now, an online music retailer headquartered in Jenkintown, <coughs> which was our third location, has received 10 million in venture capital and will use the money in a national advertising and promotional campaign. Uh, the company announced yesterday the investment, uh, large by regional standards and venture capital investments outside the biotechnology sector, comes as a period of great expectations, some would say hype, for the future of the internet-based internet retailing, especially in niche markets. Um, now, I mean, that was, and this is what, 97, so imagine what those VCs are saying now, because that's all they're investing in, right? Um, CD Now's, this is, I quote Market Watch, CD Now's snazzy website <laughs> snazzy, um, gets 1.5 million online visitors a month, the company said. Um, last year it had one third of the $18.2 million market for internet music sales. So one third was pretty cool, although it was only an $18 million market. Um, so anyhow, so we raised money in August of 97. Uh, we went public in, August, in February of 98. We were one of the first online commerce companies to go public. Uh, we went out at $16 a share, which only raised $65 million. Again, by today's standards, that's not a lot of money. Um, and, and, and actually, by those standards, I'll explain to you in a moment why it wasn't a lot of money. Um, the first day, we jumped 34%. Um, the company's valuation at that point was $342 million. Um, in April of 98, so basically, Two months later, sorry, mental math there, um, we peaked at $39 a share. Um, in May of 98, one month later, we were back down to our IPO price, and the slide continued from there. Um, we were going to do a secondary offering, but we realized that the, at the sliding um, valuation, we, it wasn't. It, we, it would be too much dilution for the company. The market, really, the cash was, the capital wasn't really available to us. So we. Um, so we canceled that secondary offering. Um, in the midst of all this, what were we doing with all of our money, other than losing money on every piece of music we sold? Well, the, the, we were spending it on customer acquisition, all right? So what, what did customer acquisition look like back in those days? And I'm gonna read you, this is from Philly.com. This is from the Inquirer. Um, CD Now in $22 million MTV deal. Um, uh, CD Now Inc. and MTV Networks have agreed to a three-year marketing and advertising agreement. As part of the deal, worth $22 million in cash and stock, the company will be the exclusive online music retailer for the 1998 MTV Video Music Awards, while also sponsoring other MTV and VH1 telecasts. Um, the online store will be built by CD Now, and now playing, and a bunch of other little features. Um, this is Jason, our founder, quoted. Um, MTV, VH1 and MTV are the only brands that have true horsepower to move consumers from their televisions to their computers. Since he did now founder Jason Olam, that's what marketing convergence is all about. Uh, now when you raise $65 million and each deal costs you $22 million, the cash doesn't last very long. Um, so then it, May, um, about a year later, right? Um, no, actually less than a year later, March 1999, we merged with our closest competitor. N2K Music Boulevard was actually, another, they, they had headquarters in New York, but they were really a Philly-based company. Um, they were the, uh, you know, we were sort of the yin and the yang of, of music. We had a white website, they had a black website. We focused on pop, they focused on classical and jazz. Um, so, but, but they, you know, they would do things like give away free shipping, and that was the only place we made money was on shipping. We didn't want to give it away for free. Um, they, they would do everything with coupons, so they trained their customers to only buy when they sent them a coupon. Um, and so, so we said, this is annoying. Now, we were, we were about a third bigger than them, I believe, at the time. This is annoying, everyone's comparing us to them. Music is a commodity, it doesn't matter where you, you buy your music from. So let's fix the problem by buying them. Um, so we didn't buy them, we actually, it was a merger of equals, but it was 55%, 45%, so it really wasn't quite equal. Um, but at that time, we were both public companies, so we, the, the value of the new company was about half a billion dollars. Um, we had 750 employees. We were already outgrowing our 90,000 square foot building in Fort Washington, ready to, to uh, lease a second building. Um, once we, be, one thing we realized along the way was that this, this couldn't last, right? Losing money off of every music sale couldn't last. So we needed to become, we needed to merge with a brand that was having more success. We picked Columbia House. Um, so so we, we, we put all of our efforts into merging with Columbia House, which then was, you know, for those people who may not know, and there are people in here who I 
think it's based on your age, probably don't know. Columbia House was was a uh, was a, a record club, right? So you would you would you would you know, subscribe, and they would send you a record a month, and then send you a bill for that. Um, so anyhow, they were they were they were extraordinarily successful. At least we thought they were. We tried to merge with them. They were owned by um, jointly owned by Sony and Time Warner. Um, so we spent about nine months preparing the company to merge with them, and. Um, and then at the last day of the, uh, the agreement, uh, Sony and Time Warner pulled out, said that they're not gonna do the deal. And here we were with, with pretty much no cash in the bank. Um, Sony and Time Warner had lent us money during this period, so now we owed them money. <laughs> and and we, we pretty much had no future. Um, we tried, I mean, basically what happened was the, 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 the market change, right? The, you know, online music, it, selling CDs online and the growth of e-commerce changed the, the music industry completely and not necessarily in a good way, right? This is, this is in the days when Napster is starting to, to, to get active and, and the music industry is fighting every sort of new technology. Um, so we decided to sell the company and we, we, we hired an investment banker, we went to sell the company and after a four month process and six serious um, bidders, uh, six serious potential bidders, on the day of the, uh, the, uh, the auction, nobody made a bid. Um, so we, were, we started Chapter 11 proceedings. At the last minute, Bertelsmann, who had, or, who had suddenly come into $8 billion in cash, um, I'll, and I'll, let me know, tell a 30-second story about where they got that from. So, so Bertelsmann had a joint venture with AOL to do AOL Europe. And so Bertelsmann owned half of that. When, when AOL and Time Warner were going to merge. They had to divest AOL Europe, so Time, so AOL bought out Bertelsmann for seven point something billion dollars. So, so Bertelsmann now says, all right, you know what? Now we're a different company. We're going to be a hip consumer brand. Um, so they gave they gave someone a billion dollars and said, go make a bunch make a bunch of acquisitions. So we sold um, we sold to Bertelsmann in July of 2000 at three dollars a share, um, about 117 million dollars. Um, plus they offered to repay our debt to Sony and Time Warner. Um, so so the, the, the good news in all of this was that, and I have this here in italics because I, I, I pulled it out of a source and I can't remember which source, we beat the death watch. So this was a time when the internet you know, was starting to, the, the, the dot com was starting to bust and there was all these websites predicting which was the next dot com retailer to fail. Uh, so we were pretty high on the list because uh, we, we, we were a pioneer and so you know, we, were, we were at the forefront of, of, of everything that was new and cool. Um, and um, so we beat the death watch and, and Bertelsmann operated us for a couple years until they realized that this billion dollar plan really wasn't a good idea and they eventually bailed out of the direct to consumer business and then they subsequently bailed out of the music industry as, ho as a whole. Um, but but um, you know the, the 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 fact is, look, we, we we didn't achieve what we wanted to achieve, but we um, but we were pioneer, right? And the pioneers often take the arrow in the back. So that that's sort of the point where I said, all right, is that a failure or not? Um, we, we did we did get shot in the back, and that wasn't our goal. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna boil this down to the three very specific things, not necessarily related to the business, but related to some of our strategy. That um, you know, if I can leave you with some 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 lessons learned. Um, the first one is don't let your competitors dictate your strategy. Um, so, so I remember the, the number three or four or five player in this space was a, a website called CD Universe, and they did the exact same thing we did. They just shipped you CDs over the, you know, you bought over the internet and they, they mailed you a CD. Um, well, today, I checked, they're still in business. They're operating out of Connecticut, they're still selling music on the internet, doing what they were doing 15, 20 years ago. So. Um, Get big, we, we had to make a decision, right? Get big quick or be last man standing. We chose to get big quick. They chose last man standing. They're still standing. Um, but regarding competitors dictate your strategy, we didn't have to merge with Music Boulevard. We could have ignored them. We could have ignored CD Universe. Amazon decides to get into the music space, so we, you know, we sort of make believe we embrace it. But um, we also say, all right, well, maybe we should get into books. Oh, Amazon's too big in books. You know what? We, we should have forgot about Amazon and do what we thought was best. We should have forgot about Music Boulevard and do what we thought was best. Um, uh, don't pay to play, and, and, and you know, that's a lesson we learned back then. It's very, you know, the, the, whole, the whole economy is very different today. There's a lot less of it, but there still is opportunities to do it. Don't. Um, you know, the deals that we did, I mean, we, did, we had deals, with, exclusive deals with MTV, with AOL, with Yahoo, with Rolling Stone. These deals, I mean, the MTV deal was $22 million. Um, 
the, there was, I, I forget which ones was which, AOL was I think a $3 million deal, Yahoo was an $8 million deal, Rolling Stone was a $5 million deal. Um, you know, we, we paid for their credibility, we paid for their endorsement, we paid for their traffic, we, we could have done that all ourselves. We had done that all ourselves, in fact. Um, and the third lesson is, is, is don't put all your eggs in one basket. Um, you know, our sole focus on merging with Columbia House, you know, there was no plan B. Um, and yes, the, the music industry changed while this was all going on. And the internet, you know, the dot com, you know, started to, to, to bust. So, so that, that was also working against us. But we, we didn't, we, we never had a plan B. Um, so, so always, you know, if you're operating lean, as you know, some of the other speakers, you know, talked about today about failing fast, um, you know, you're less likely to do that. But the fact is that, that um, you know, make sure you, you know, d don't wait to pivot until you have to pivot. Always, always keep a much broader perspective. Uh, even if you only can afford to work on one thing at a time, know what the next thing is and the thing after that is. So that's it. Thank you. So, um, I don't know if you mind just elaborating on the idea of don't pay to play. Um, does that mean don't pay for endorsements? Does that mean to like decide on a clear line of when when to not pay cash? Or can you elaborate on that? I, I think you know the, the spirit behind it is to is to have all your deals, all your opportunities be measurable. Right? Don't, uh, don't let someone just take your money for the sake of taking your money. Know what you're paying for and have things built into your agreements that allow you to measure it and to change it if the measurements aren't met. Um, just just don't, don't write blank checks just because you feel like you're, you're pressured or it's the only solution. Okay, cool. Thanks, Mike.